It's Tuesday the 10th of February from the MEN newsroom. This is Channel M's lunchtime news and these are today's headlines. Open to blackmail, the verdict of a report that delves into the private life of Greater Manchester's former Chief Constable. If you're a Chief Constable, you've got to have higher standards than the rest of us. And in having affairs with women, so there's the potential there for him to get himself into a situation of blackmail. Also coming up, find my son's killer, the heartfelt appeal from a mum a year after the attack that killed him. At least he's not done nothing to nobody, to hurt anybody, for them even to turn around and go out there and shoot, shoot him. They just think of a very cowardly way they've done it. And an impressive stunt to pull the covers off Withenshaw Hospital's new future. We've uh, had uh, the uh, signing of the hospital unveiled by the uh, soldier of the Royal Artillery, abseiling down the front of the hospital to unveil the plaque. And then following that, we will have a presentation from uh, members of my unit. <laughs> Good afternoon. Now, a top story. He damaged the reputation of the police and left himself open to blackmail. But a report has found the chaotic private life of former Greater Manchester Chief Constable Michael Todd did not affect his ability to run the force. The inquiry follows his death on a Welsh mountainside last year. Ben Bland now looks at the police officer who will be remembered as much for his string of affairs as his tough stance on crime. As legacies go, that's one that no senior policeman wants to have. After Michael Todd's death, an investigation began into whether the chief constable's affairs with a number of women had affected his job. That inquiry, led by the head of West Midlands Police, Sir Paul Scott Lee, found that Mr Todd's affairs damaged the reputation of British policing. Manchester Evening News reporter Neil Keeling has followed the investigation over the past ten months and was among the first to see its findings. You should also put it into the context that the same report has also concluded that without doubt Michael Todd was a dynamic, charismatic leader of Greater Manchester Police and achieved a lot in terms of fighting crime and protecting the public during his tenure. The Chief Constable was found dead on Mount Snowdon in North Wales on March the 11th last year. At the time, it was said he feared his affair with Angie Robinson, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, would be made public. But in October, a coroner's inquest ruled his death was neither suicide nor an accident, simply finding that he died of exposure. After Mr Todd's death, it emerged that he'd had affairs with at least five women within Greater Manchester Police. That led to this inquiry, which also found the following. Through those affairs, Mr Todd had put himself at risk of blackmail. In the circumstances, though, it did not impact on his duties as the head of the force. There was no evidence that he'd misused expenses or police equipment, such as computers, cars and phones, in conducting those affairs. Nor had any women at GMP been fast-tracked as a result of their relationships with him. But while this official investigation found that Mr Todd's private life did not affect his duties, the police authority, his employer, say if they'd known about his affairs, they may not have renewed his contract, his integrity and judgment called into question by the findings of this inquiry. I think it confirms him as a charismatic, great cop, but also exposes his human frailties. Ben Bland, Channel M News. Thanks, Ben. Well, in a statement, the new Chief Constable, Peter Farhi, has described today's report as a thorough inquiry into important issues and says the force now needs to move on and concentrate on further improving the service we provide to the people of Greater Manchester. Michael Todd's widow, Carolyn, has asked for privacy to come to terms with their loss, saying Michael said he wanted to make a difference. He achieved his ambition. He was not just a dedicated police officer, but also a loving father and husband. He is deeply Missed. The Greater Manchester Police Authority, which was responsible for giving Michael Todd his job as Chief Constable, will be giving its reaction to today's report later this afternoon. More on that with Andy Crane in our early evening news from five tonight. 
A woman has been charged by detectives investigating the murder of a Bolton teenager last November. Amy Lee Barnes was stabbed to death and her body was found at a house in Farnworth. A 49-year-old woman is due to appear in court, accused of assisting an offender. 21-year-old Ricardo Morrison from Birmingham has previously been charged with her murder. There's been a new twist in the search for a man wanted over the murder of a woman in Salford. Detectives have now made a direct appeal for George Appleton to get in touch with them. They want to question him after Claire Wood's badly burnt body was found in the bedroom of a house in Blackfriars. George, if you're listening to this, um, I want you to get in touch with me or your solicitor. I'm concerned about your welfare. I know you're suffering from an illness and you might be in pain, but we need to speak and I need you to contact me or your solicitor. So can I urge you to get in touch with the police and we can resolve this? Next, more than a year after she was told her teenage son had been shot dead at a bookie shop in Withington, there's a heartfelt appeal from a mum to find whoever pulled that trigger. The identity of Louis Braithwaite's killer remains a mystery which she's now desperate to solve. A typical scene in a betting shop. Punters at William Hill Bookmakers on Maldeth Road West in Withington play on fruit machines. The door opens, a gun goes off and people run for cover. The moment Louis Brathwaite from Fallowfield is shot is captured on this security camera. Louis, who was 16, suffered wounds to his abdomen and chest and fought bravely for his life for 12 days until he died a year ago today. It's something that, it doesn't go, it doesn't go away. No matter, you know, the rest of people get some of their lives, but as a parent and you have seen your son just die, literally in front of you. Could just imagine him now as I'm talking about him, just really just being there in that bed. It was just, it was horrible. The offer of a £20,000 reward hasn't tempted people to come forward with information, so police have today released these pictures as part of their search for the killer. The Lucy's not done nothing to nobody, to hurt anybody, for them even to turn around and go out there and shoot, shoot him. I just think of a very cowardly way they've done it. And I don't know if it's intended for Lewis or if it only the person who's done it knows. It's believed the gunman escaped with another man in a black VW Golf with a registration similar to WG07YXY. JJB Sports has confirmed a number of potential bidders have shown interest in buying its chain of fitness clubs. Sales in the Wigan-based firm jumped as much as 70% with reports over the weekend the sale could raise £55 million. Bosses need money to pay the company's debts and refocus on their high street operation, but there are fears for up to 800 jobs in the chain's lifestyle arm after the firm confirmed it plans to appoint administrators. The former heads of two of our biggest banks have said sorry to MPs for the events that led to them being given massive government bailouts. Those who used to be in charge at Royal Bank of Scotland and HBOS are being questioned. They've been asked whether they ignored warnings from the Bank of England in the run-up to last year's problems and have also admitted a review of bonuses paid to staff needs to be carried out. A pub landlord from Wigan's been attacked by four men brandishing baseball bats while he was asleep. The gang stormed into the 54-year-old's bedroom above the Union Arms on Castle Street early yesterday morning and started hitting him. The victim tried to fight them off, but he was pinned to the floor as they demanded cash. They made off with money from the till and the fruit machine before driving off in a silver Vauxhall Vectra. Experts say more of us should grate our cheese and switch from frying meat to grilling it. They're just two tips to cut the amount of saturated fat we eat. A report says that's one of the main changes needed to reduce the number of people suffering from heart disease. Earlier on I spoke to Dr Binoj Nair to find out how bad for us saturated fats can be. Um, it's, a, it's a big problem because um, high levels of saturated fat in your diet result in you having a high blood cholesterol level and blood cholesterol is one of the five big risk factors for cardiovascular disease. When we talk about cardiovascular disease, not just heart attacks, things like strokes and peripheral vascular disease as well. So it's a huge, huge issue and a cut down in saturated fat and therefore a cut down in cholesterol will make a big difference. So what sort of foods are we talking about here that might have high levels of saturated fat in them? It's mainly things that contain animal fats. So uh, meat itself, um, which has the fat on it or the skin on it, um, dairy products like cheese and butter, and also things like pastries, chocolates, biscuits, cakes, that kind of thing. 
Now we're hearing a lot today about things like grating your cheese perhaps or grilling your food rather than frying it. How much of a difference will those things actually make to the amount of saturated fat you're taking in? It will make a big difference. The point about grating your cheese is that uh, you use less quantity so simply by cutting the quantity down you cut the amount of fat you're taking so that's why you should grate your cheese grilling your food is much better because one if you fry it you have to fry it in oil and the oils contain saturated fats and the meat retains the fat whereas if you grill it you're not using oil and the fat tends to drain away so those are good bits of advice and they are important and they will make a genuine difference. And what sort of other things can you do to try to cut your intake as well? So other things people can do, uh, one is to take the skin off any meat. If you're going to cook meat, don't eat the skin. Uh, cut the fat off before you cook any meat and discard the fat. Um, things like if you're going to have a, a pie, a pastry, um, the pastry contains a lot of fat, so get a pie which doesn't have pastry all the way around. Um, cut down on your chocolate intake. Try and make chocolates a treat rather than an everyday snack, that kind of thing. Researchers say the finest chips in the country are served here in the north of England. 93% of people here reckon ours are the tastiest, with a third of southerners also agreeing. Overall, 6 out of 10 people told a survey they thought chips here are better than those served down south. Well, we'd like to know what you think makes the tastiest chip. Send us a text to treble 821. Start your message with the word news, or you can email newsdesk at channelm.co.uk. With news now of an unlikely ally for Chelsea's former manager and the rest of the lunchtime sports news, here's Mike Bradley. Thank you very much, James. So Alex Ferguson has expressed his surprise at Chelsea's decision to axe manager Luis Felipe Scolari after only seven months in charge at Stamford Bridge. The Blues boss appears to have paid the ultimate price for his side dropping 16 points at home and for the Carling Cup exit at the hands of Burnley, although the club do remain in the FA Cup and Champions League. So Alex said he was shocked at the news and there was absolutely no patience left in the world. And staying with that story, Swinton Lions head coach Paul Kidd was a guest on this morning's breakfast show and admitted being under pressure was now an accepted part of leading a club. There's pressures in every sort of head coaching job or manager's job. Um, it doesn't matter what level you're at, the, the, the pressure's the same. I suppose the, the pressure's a little bit greater with the publicity that comes with football or, or Super League, for example, where everybody's talking about it day in, day out. But uh, certainly there's, uh, there's pressures down in the championship. I suppose the pressures for you lately have been uh, the weather. You've, not, you've had, what, one pre-season game and that's it? Yeah, we've, uh, we've managed to get one pre-season game in against Warrington. Um, we, we lost two pre-season games due to the weather and, uh, of course, we, we lost uh, last Sunday's game against Workington Town due to the weather, so we were all geared up, ready to go for the Northern Rail Cup and, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the frost got the better of us. We'll Honestly. play Dewsbury this week coming. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough start for us, but it's one that we're looking forward to. Then, of course... Uh, we have to wait now until the 22nd of, uh, of February before we can uh, host a home game against Lee in the Northern Rail Cup. Manchester City have to, are to reduce their season ticket prices next season by an average of 7%. It's the first time the club have cut prices and is being seen as an attempt to help their supporters through the credit crunch. Berry's game at Rotherham has just been called off due to a frozen pitch, but Macclesfield's game at Exeter is still on, although the Siltman will be without the suspended Richard Walker. Oldham boss John Sheridan is still searching for a keeper ahead of his side's game against Northampton on Saturday. Greg Fleming is suspended and Mark Crossley injured, which leaves the club with only 19-year-old Josh Bell as cover. However, the better news for the Latics is Ruben Hazel has signed a new deal, tying him to the club until 2011. While in the Blue Square North, Staley Bridge faced neighbours Droylston this evening. The Manchester Phoenix warmed up for this weekend's back-to-back -back cup games with a tough league fixture against the Coventry Blaze at the Altrincham Ice Dome. Here's how they got on, along with the thoughts of man of the match, Kenton Smith. The guys played well, like Adam Walker scored a big goal and for us and uh, Kyle Bruce and you know David and luckily myself. Uh, one went in and, uh, you know, overall it was a great game. They're a highly skilled team like, like us, you know. Uh, you know it's going to be a hard-fought hard, hard -fought game every time. You know, they got a bunch of players that can put the puck in the net like we do. Um, I think we match up pretty well. Uh, I think uh, we're a few points behind them in the standings right now, but uh, you never know until the end of the year. It's a nice pick-me-up after the last time we were in Coventry there when uh, we let in a few goals in the last uh, minute. Uh, so, you know, it shows that the guys, you know, they, can, they compete. 
they, they didn't give up like uh, maybe people thought we would. But, you know, they came back again. But, you know, we kept at it, kept uh, pushing it, and uh, we got the goal in the end. Finally, in Rugby Union, France have just dropped sales Sebastian Chabal and Lionel Foray ahead of their Six Nations game against Scotland on Saturday. That's it from me for now. Please try and join Sam Goodman, who will be with you with all your early evening sports news from 5 o'clock. Mike, thanks very much for the update this lunchtime. Plenty more still to come on the lunchtime news, including more on our top story, that inquiry following the death of former Chief Constable Michael Todd, and pictures from Withenshaw Hospital's big relaunch. The hospitals throughout the, the country, all NHS hospitals, help provide staff for our military hospitals and we're absolutely delighted that uh, the University of Hospitals of South Manchester is providing volunteers for us to do just that. You're watching the Lunchtime News from Channel M. Welcome back. Don't forget you can go online as well to channelm.co.uk where all our reports and headlines are available 24 hours a day. Right now, the full story of the police search for a man wanted over a murder in Salford and also take a look at our investigation into what future a typical high street has with so many shops in trouble because of the recession. That's at channelm.co.uk. We're back now to our main headline and the inquiry following the death of Greater Manchester's former Chief Constable Michael Todd. The report concluded he damaged the reputation of the police with a string of affairs. The document has delved into both his private and professional life and concluded he left himself open to possible blackmail plots because of his different relationships with women. But it does say that these did not affect his ability to run the force, though he may well have not had his contract extended. He is praised, though, for his actual policing work, with quotes describing him as dynamic, charismatic and highly professional. He's also been cleared of doing anything wrong regarding expenses, travel and accommodation and use of police equipment. Neil Keeling from the Manchester Evening News got the first exclusive look at the document. Well, the main point is that uh, the report has concluded that um, by having a string of affairs, Michael Todd damaged the reputation of British policing. It also says that... Um, in having the affairs, he made himself vulnerable potentially to blackmail. However, um, the affairs did not affect the efficient running of Greater Manchester Police. How much does it dwell on how dangerous a position it is for somebody in Michael Todd's position to be in to leave yourself open to such things like that? I think if you're a Chief Constable, you've got to have higher standards than the rest of us. And in having affairs with women, the point that the Sir Paul Scott Lee is making is that um, those women would not have been vetted. So there's the potential there for him to get himself into a situation of blackmail, either by criminals or potentially by people acting for terrorist groups. Well, in a statement, the new Chief Constable, Peter Farhi, has described today's report as a thorough inquiry into important issues and says the force now needs to move on and concentrate on further improving the service we provide to the people of Greater Manchester. Michael Todd's widow, Carolyn, has asked for privacy to come to terms with their loss, saying, Michael said he wanted to make a difference. He achieved his ambition. He was not just a dedicated police officer, but also a loving father and husband. He is deeply missed. It's reported the wife of Coronation Street actor Bill Roach may have died from a heart attack. Sarah Roach was 58 and the couple had been married for more than 30 years. She hadn't been ill previously when she died on Saturday. Kumi Burton from the St George Society was a long-time friend of hers. I've known her off and on for the last 20 to 25 years, I think, because we did a lot of uh, work for uh, conservative fundraising and also when I, I was involved with the uh, with crime stoppers greater manchester uh, she came in uh, supported me with her husband and did all sorts of things she was very nice very bubbly very matter of fact and if you say to her i mean this is i'm talking as a chairman of an organization i'll say will you do this and she said yes don't worry and she 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 does it Australian police say they're confident they will find the arsonists who started some of the wildfires that have been raging there. The death toll now stands at 181 but is expected to rise further as more bodies are found. Nearly a thousand homes have been destroyed and residents in parts of Victoria are still on alert in areas close to the flames that are still burning.
Gale force winds, torrential rain and more snow have wreaked transport havoc in the south. With roads closed, trains cancelled and flights disrupted. The southwest seems to be worst hit with Bristol Airport shut overnight and the River Severn crossing between England and Wales closed when vehicles were hit by falling ice. Bad weather in France means flights between Paris and Manchester Airport are also being disrupted. Withinshaw Hospital is getting a makeover. It will now be known as the University Hospital of South Manchester and it was literally an event of military precision to complete the change. <laughs> Today we are uh, at the uh, opening of the University Hospitals of South Manchester NHS Trust. We've uh, had uh, the uh, signing of the hospital unveiled by the uh, soldiers of the Royal Artillery, abseiling down the front of the hospital to unveil the plaque. And then following that, we will have a presentation from uh, members of my unit who are also serving in the University Hospital of South Manchester. The uh, hospitals throughout the, the country, all NHS hospitals, help provide staff for our military hospitals who join the TA and we're absolutely delighted that uh, the University of Hospitals of South Manchester is providing volunteers for us to do just that. Now we've featured all sorts of art and artists here on Channel M over the years but here's a first up till now we've never met a chainsaw artist. <laughs> Well, we're in the grounds of a chiropractor's practice in Sale and uh, chiropractors to do with backs. So uh, what he wants is a backbone carved out of this uh, log here. And this is an oak log uh, that's been brought in specially. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a big chainsaw to start off with, take big chunks of wood away. Then I'll use a smaller chainsaw, a little bit of a pointy carving bar on it to get some of the finer detail. And it'll be uh, sanded down give them some Danish oil and hopefully it'll last for years and years and years. The chainsaw woodwork is a bit of a present from chiropractor Doug Clark to himself to mark 20 years of dynamic chiropractic being in practice and becoming president of the British Chiropractic Sports Council. I, I was very taken by the, the work that Tim had, had done in the local park here at Worthington Park. He'd, he'd done the Wizard of Worthington Park and, and the Snail Bench for, for local people. Uh, so I, I liked what I saw in terms of, of that. So um, I thought, well, we ought to have something relating to, to what we do in the building. So, um, so the spine came out of that, really. So, what can we expect? Well, here's a piece of work which Tim has already done in a park just around the corner from where he's now working. The Channel M cameras are going back tomorrow to see how it all turned out. Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there's been snow and flooding down south, but it looks like we are going to escape all that. Here's Michelle Eagleton with the weather. another cold day across Greater Manchester. We're seeing highs of just four and five degrees in most places and we are going to experience a bit of rain as well and possibly some snowy showers right uh, across some higher ground areas. That rain and snow shouldn't stay too long although there'll be a bit of drizzle overnight and that'll keep us into Wednesday which is particularly a rainy day expected. Thursday, Friday shaping up not too bad, dry with a bit of cloud and then Saturday those temperatures will plummet to minus five and more snow. This is the Channel M Lunchtime News. Our top story, Greater Manchester's former Chief Constable Michael Todd's been accused of damaging the reputation of the police. An inquiry following his death says his numerous affairs left him open to blackmail. More on that in our early evening news with Andy Crane tonight from five. But from me and the Lunchtime team, have a good afternoon. Bye-bye for now.